We're going to talk about, you know, the good, the bad, but I want to start off with the ugly. And I think the ugly is we have no cornerbacks in this class. Now, I know some people will yell out Malik Curtis, um, but I mean no true cornerbacks. Um, and I think we want to look directly at Mike Rump um, for that. I've gotten a lot of people to tell me that Mike Rump doesn't recruit the cornerback. Um, I don't know if that's true. Um, if he's not recruiting the, the cornerbacks, then what is he doing? So the big thing that a lot of people are looking at is why wasn't there any cornerbacks signed and why have we consistently missed on top cornerbacks? Um, let's start with you, Chris. What are your thoughts on the subject? I, I think it's definitely a rump problem. And, you know, I'm, I've defended him at times over the course of the year. You know, I think... I, I know people disagree, but I think he's done a pretty good job in terms of developing guys and, you know, getting a lot out of a little. But just the fact that he has so little to work with routinely is a pretty strong indicator that he's not pulling his weight on the other side of the coin. And like you said, if he's not really the guy who's out there recruiting, then you ask your question, well, you know, how much value does on the staff does he really have? You know, um, and I do like Malik Curtis. I like having guys like that with that physical profile in the cornerback room. Cause I feel like if you're not going to get the super elite dude, then get the guy with the super elite traits and then, you know, mold him into it. Cause that, those are guys that get drafted high. You know, you see guys from like small schools getting picked in the first two rounds cause they run a four, three, you know, and I think Curtis has that kind of profile, but you're right. He's not a pure corner. He's not a guy that's going to come in and help us next year. Um, like a Jason Marshall would, or even, even like a Travis Dawson, if, if we were able to get him, like he's a guy that could probably help in the relative short term. Um, but I think it's a rump problem. And I, and I don't know what's going to go on in the next couple of weeks, but, you know, I, I assume the portal is going to be hit pretty hard and who knows what might shake loose when we do. Yeah. Uh, rump, I think the writing is on the wall for him in terms of his job security. Um, you know, the cornerbacks haven't looked good enough this year for him to point towards the development portion. And then when you add on the recruiting woes, um, you know, we're not bringing in, you know, super high quality guys. We're missing on, you know, the local studs, um, you know, they, you know, they go sec, um, but we're still not even getting, you know, those second tier guys. Um, you know, we lost, uh, Jaden McBurrows today to Michigan, who is a dumpster fire in and of itself. But you know, there, there's something going on with cornerback recruiting. Um, you know, is it a rump issue? Is it bigger than rump issue? Um, you know, is Manny not prioritizing the position? Um, you know, Blake Baker as well. But um, you know, as Chris said, you know, I'm high on Malik Curtis as well. I like having that type of athlete in the cornerback room. Um, you know, it's going to, might take him a little bit to get on the field. Um, but you know, a guy that can run and has ball skills, um, just like Marcus Clark, uh, last year, <clears throat> um, can, can really make an impact down the road. Um, you know, we still have, you know, six more weeks of recruiting until, you know, the second signing day. So, you know, maybe we do land at Tavares Dawson, maybe another name pops up that, you know, we don't, we're not even thinking of right now. Um, but, you know, I'm not, I don't have high expectations for cornerback recruiting and, you know, the past couple of years have, you know, I think given us every reason not to be optimistic in that field. And I think you made a great point, Bill, when you, and I want to say this too, you know, we're not just, you know, upset because we didn't get any cornerbacks, right? I mean, uh, not only did we not get any, get any of them, when you look at the play on the field, we need cornerbacks because of um, how our corners have been performing. They haven't been performing um, to a high standard. And it, it, it's showing on the field. And you would hope that, okay, if that's showing on the field, we're going to go out and bring some kids in. But now we're relying on the transfer portal. Um, it, it's, let me ask you guys this, okay? And it's kind of tough because we don't know all the details, but I, but I said this when it happened, right? I think it looks bad on the staff to let a guy like Tim Burns Jr. go and not have a corner sealed up. And when Tim Burns Jr., when that D commitment came and, and it was said to believe that we pushed him out of this class, I said, listen, 
Maybe they got a trick up the sleeve. I'm not happy with letting Tim Burns Jr. go because I really did like the kid. But maybe they got a backup corner that they're going to get into this class. And there was names thrown around. And we sit here on uh, early National Signing Day with no corners. So let's look back at the Tim Burns Jr. situation. Knowing what we know today that we don't have any corners right now uh, in this class, are you? Um, what are your thoughts on the Tim Burns Jr. situation? So I think with Tim Burns, um, and I'm going to kind of go against the grain here, I'm fine with the coaching staff dropping a player if they don't think he's Miami caliber. Um, you know, we're, we're limited um, by the 25 initial counter limit. Um, so if a guy isn't up to par, um, if you're just taking a body to take a body, that's not good. Maybe he didn't develop the way – they thought he would, you know, maybe something happened um, off the field. I'm not you know, saying that I'm just throwing out as an option, um, but you know, something happened where they didn't want him a part of this class. And I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I'd rather, um, you know, hit the portal and use that spot for someone that we know can contribute versus someone that, you know, is too small or, you know, not fast enough, whatever the case is with him and their evaluation. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the, the numbers speak for themselves. We have four four healthy scholarship cornerbacks right now. Well, that's embarrassing for a Power 5 program. It's even more embarrassing for a Power 5 program that is in the cornerback capital of the world in South Florida, where you can literally throw a rock from off, cam- off campus and, you know, find a high school that has, you know, a couple three-star guys, maybe even a four-star guy, um, you know, that could come in and contribute for you. But, you know, we're still not landing those guys, um, you know, which is the biggest issue. But, you know, they, they dropped Tim Burns, you know, position of need. Um, so, you know, it just kind of magnifies it a little bit that we didn't land anyone today. Um, you know, we have, we'll, we'll call Malik Curtis a cornerback, but, you know, he, he's an athlete, but he's going to start out at corner. But it's just, it's it's embarrassing at this point. Um, but I, you know, I don't fault the staff for dropping someone that they don't think is Miami caliber. You, you agree with that, Chris, you're, you're in that same line of thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking because I agree totally what Billy said about, um, the drop in a guy who's not of the caliber. Um, cause like you said, the IC limit is so tight that you don't want to go and, and waste the spot, especially, you know, at some point soon, we'll get back up to the 85, you know, around that range. We'll see, I guess. Um, but that whole idea of having a, a spot available just for a corner because he plays the position would probably put us behind because we'd be in a spot a couple of years from now where we have a, a dude like, you know, no offense to him, but like Robert Knowles was just taking up a, a spot on the roster that we don't need. You know, I hate to lose a guy like a good transfer that wants to come because of that. Um, especially we don't know what's happening with the Eric King. We don't know what's happening with some of the older guys that they're coming back or they're leaving or whatever. Um, so that's a big part of it. And I, and I also think too, like, I we really don't know what's going to change in the next, you know, now regular signing day and regular, like I guess late signing day now in February, like we have a little bit of time before then and, and we could very easily see some turnover on the staff. So, you know, we might have an opportunity to, to get a guy later, you know, in the portal, even a guy who might still like technically be a true freshman because of the way that, um, that the, the, like, the eligibility is going to work out this year. So we might be able to still pull in someone for like technically this class. Um, a little bit late, depending on who's who's coaching the cornerbacks at that point. Let me ask you guys this. Um, do y'all see anybody, you know, Malik Curtis is the name. Um, what about Avante Williams? Do y'all think Avante Williams could play some corner if he had to? He has the, he has the physical skills to do it. Um, he's probably the one of the fastest defensive backs we have currently on the roster. It'll change him. Malik gets there, but you know, it's probably he and Marcus Clark for the fastest DBs overall. Um, he has a history of playing some corner playing like a slot safety role um, when he was in high school. And I think that's, that's probably, that, that's honestly what I thought he would be coming into this year. If he was healthy enough to play like a slot corner, um, can move some back to free safety, kind of lets you play those safeties on a string a little bit. Um, so I would love to see him in that role, especially with, you know, having a versatile guy like James Williams and Cam Kinchins and having those guys back at safety, you could do more with Avante. Um, so hopefully he's healthy. And plus also it's, it's less wear and tear on his body to go out and play corner than it is to play safety, especially in the short term while we're trying to figure out, you know, just how healthy he is. 
I, yeah, I think he can from a, from a necessity standpoint. Hey, we need someone to play corner. You know, he can do it. He can do it. I don't know to the highest level that he can. Um, but you know, he was a top two or top three rated safety in the entire country. Um, you know, I would hate to diminish you know that type of potential um, by putting him in a position that isn't his best position. Um, you know, our safety play wasn't good this year, you know, Bubba Bolden flashed a lot, um, but Gervin Hall was, you know, disappeared. Um, Amari Carter is basically a linebacker. You know, we, we need help at safety. Um, so I would love to be able to keep Avante back there and not be forced to put him at corner where he's not that elite, you know, top three in the country type player.